Is your past causing you pain and anxiety? Today the Lord is telling you and me, your past is history and your walk in Christ is victory. To share with us on the theme of our retreat today, the promise that the Lord is giving each one of us to forget the former things and see the new thing that the Lord is working for us. Once again, we invite Anastasia in our midst. Let us thank God for Anastasia. Thank you, Irma. The word of God in Isaiah chapter 43, as I read today for you even during the service, it says that he has chosen you, called you by name. But the promise today is from the verse 18 and 19, which says, forget the former things of old. But I will like to read God's word to you. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 says, But thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, o Israel, do not fear. For I have redeemed you, I have called you by name. You are mine. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offsprings from the east and from the west. I will gather you. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen. And finally, I'm reading the verse 18 and 19. It says, do not remember the former things of old. Or consider the things of old, for I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The word of the Lord. Our final take home thing is, this is a year of miracles. This is a year where you will forget all the former things of old. And one reason, and there's only one reason, is you are special. Please say, I'm special. I'm special. Tell your neighbor, I'm special. I'm so I'm inviting my friend. You know, last one year, we have, last two years, we have gone through a pandemic. And she will tell you how she felt special by learning only three lessons through this pandemic. I have only three minutes. And I have actually learned a lot of lessons in this pandemic, but I will pick up the three points that really I have learned. One is that we have endless opportunities. Didn't we all learn that in the, in the pandemic? Although we, we were inside our homes, somehow there were so many opportunities that came about that we could, we never thought that we could work from home right? But we could work from home and now it's changed. We are going to have a hybrid way of working, which means I can be in office three days and two days I can be at home. Isn't that great? And normally we still, when, when you know, when mothers used to have kids, uh, you know, for the pregnancy or maternity leave, it was only six months. It, I mean, it was three months and then it, the government made it six months. But now we know we can have another three months or six months because of this hybrid way of working. So I learned this, that we need to be open and not rigid. I was rigid in the beginning when this whole thing came about working from home. I am a trainer and I train and so now when I'm talking to you, I can see you, I can see you smiling, it's so easy to talk. But imagine talking to those people on the screen and trying to teach them about a, you know, about a product or a service or something. It was so, inside me it was so difficult. So but I learned this over a period of two years now, time has gone, I have become more, uh, I have learned the art of training online and offline, right? So that's the first thing, that is endless opportunities. Be prepared for endless opportunities. The second one is, I realize that God needs my availability. 
You know, God is always with us, but am I available for God? And this whole thing of being, in this whole thing of being uh, working off uh, online, there was no time to like when we went to office. There was a time we left home, we left at uh, left at eight o'clock, reached office at nine o'clock. Then we came back maybe five thirty six back from work. So there was a time we were not in the house. But what happened with this? online offline thing this whole thing of being online and working there was no fixed time of going to work and fixed time of ending work which means if i'm working with somebody in in the in america or in france their nine o'clock is my 12 o'clock right so what would happen is we would end up extending our hours of work right and so what did what happened in this that we ended up there was no fixed time of working and you realize that we know sometimes we do everything and there's no time for prayer right so i had this conversation with the lord and i said now you see i don't get time to pray in the evenings because by the time the day ended i would be feeling so tired and wanting to go to sleep and you had to also do the work of the cooking right so you had to manage home and it would be like i would be carrying my laptop in my kitchen and listening to a uh, listening to a, a a meeting or being a part of a meeting and cooking so all of this uh, taught me something that i had to ask god i said you know lord uh, I need to pray, so I'm not getting a chance to pray. So you know what the Lord did? He started waking me at three o'clock. <laughs> so you realize one thing is that only you need to be available. God will make the, He will make and prepare the way for you to get up in the morning and be with Him, because He's always with you. It's just that you don't give Him your attention, right? So the second point was God needs my availability. That was what I learned. Uh, for Him to build that relationship, I have grown in my faith. So I have been serving the Lord. Actually, you can say I have been serving the Lord all my life. Maybe only the 13 years that I was married, I didn't serve. But apart from that, I've always been serving the Lord. But in these 20 years that I have been there, I have seen I grew in these last two years with the Lord. He not only gave me his gifts and his charisms, uh, he built me in a different way. And he woke me up at three o'clock. So can you imagine waking me at three o'clock and keeping me awake right up till nine o'clock? I didn't get, never felt asleep at, you know, in the afternoon or whatever. He gave me the strength and the energy. So you just have to tell him that I am available. You do whatever. He will give you the strength. So that is it. So... I know this, that God is, uh, is someone who's very powerful. You need to just ask him in your prayers and he will do things for you. And the third thing is death is real. Didn't we all learn that uh, in the pandemic? I don't think I lost, apart from losing my own brother in 2020 December, it was not due to the pandemic. It was, it was, his, it was something that he was already, it's an illness he was already going through. But there are a lot of people who lost their loved ones just suddenly, right? We all want to go to heaven, but we don't want to die. And that is what I learned that in this period of time that when people were dying suddenly and, you know, we learned of youngsters, people who not, like my mom is 85 and she's yet alive and she's yet, you know, we just celebrated her 85th birthday she can't do do everything but you know to have your you have somebody who is that old and you hear of people who are dying who are in their 20s or in their 40s and you feel like and then in all of this I learned that death is real it can come anytime I might be serving the Lord but am I having a heart that is always asking for pardon is that, is, is that heart of mine asking for, you know, forgiveness? Because we need to be very well tuned to that, that every day, daily, I need to ask the Lord for forgiveness. So these are my three minutes and my three points. Anastasia, you can take over. <laughs> so I'll just repeat what I said. Endless opportunities is one. God needs my availability. And the third 
realization is that death is real. I cannot go to heaven without dying. I need to die. So these are the three lessons that she learned in the pandemic. You can take any one of them and work on them. You know, there's a big buffet the Lord places before us, but we did not have everything. We need to take something. Why? Because you are special. The word of God tells us, I have created you for my purpose. Fear not, I have redeemed you. You are precious in my eyes. I have called you by name. You are mine. So God has called each one of you by name. You are his. So today when you go home, don't write, write your name there. I Sunita or I Rupa or I Celine, whoever it is. God has sent you this invitation. I'd like to quote something. A virtuous woman is as a woman of strength is a crown of, to the husband, to the family. We are all called to imitate Christ, but simply to allow him to confirm us to his image. I said, we are created in whose image? In the image and likeness of God. Like she said, the second point was, God needs our availability. To be conformed to the image of God, you need to spend time with God. Because he wants to renew and restore our broken lives if we yield ourselves to him in a loving relationship. Maria said it earlier, I'm saying it again. Unless you yield yourself to a loving relationship with God, Everything else seems wasted. You know, in the mornings, like Fiona said, like I think for many years, even today sometimes, I'm still back at the 2.33. Uh, you know, initially when I met the Lord, in fact, you can go on YouTube today, they have done my testimony, so it's there. But I remember the time when I woke up at 3 o'clock, every day, every day, and I used to wonder, one day, can he change this clock? And in a very short time, I started traveling. So imagine you're flying a continent and then you land up there and then you know, again, you bank up at three. And one day, I remember one sister in Rome, she came to the chapel and she seen me. And she said, Anastasia, you just arrived last night. Don't you sleep? And I was feeling very embarrassed, honestly speaking. So when I came to India once, I shared with one of my priest friends. I said, you know what? Father, this three o'clock now, okay, it was as long as I was here, it was okay. But now wherever I go, it's still three o'clock. I said, people ask me if I don't sleep. And then he smiled and he said, Anastasia, bargain for the time. I said, really? You can bargain? He says, you can bargain. So after some time, I got after some five to seven years, I got seven, no, five o'clock. Decent, five o'clock is still decent, right? But then I realized something, you know what? I wanted to be in control and Jesus was no longer in control. I wanted to have my will, not his will, because I was a little embarrassed. So today I have realized, if we want to renew our relationship with him, this, I have a cursor today, but the remote of my life has to be in his hands, not in my hands. Because I have called you by name, you are mine. You are special and you are on earth for a purpose which has to be fulfilled. I know some of you keep saying, I don't know what my purpose is. God knows why I have come here. No, no, no. Each one of us has a purpose. Like my purpose, I'll be, tell you. As a youngster, I had business, I grew, I studied, all that, okay, fine. But I built, like, you know, as, at the age of 12, I wrote an essay, my ambition in life is to build an empire. You know, your mom, if you're any teachers here, no offenses, okay? Uh, my mom was a teacher, dad spent years in research, and my mom said, tear that essay, don't write this essay, I'll be called to school. Write engineer like dad or doctor, but don't write this rubbish. And I never forget telling her, no, 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 I will not work for anybody, people will work for me. So in fact, when I bought my factory, my brother asked me, is this the first block of your empire? And I told him, you remember? He says, of course I remember, who doesn't remember? You bought the roof down, you mum was saying, tear the essay, you saying, I won't tear this essay. But 
that was my purpose in those days and it was to do very very well in life and then of course the cut the long story short i was miraculously healed i was called to serve i was asked to sell everything and went to seminary to study god's word and then ultimately today i say i know my purpose is not to fashion clothes anymore but with the holy spirit i help fashion souls for jesus and you all are here so that's my purpose so every one of us has a purpose and that purpose has to be fulfilled now it's almost more than two decades i'm serving i'm happy god showed me my purpose i'm sincerely telling you it's fulfilling though you won't get support when you answer god's call i can assure you you won't get support you will get criticism you'll get and your own faith is sometimes challenged but if you know who has called you you will be able to stay faithful so a purpose on earth which has to be fulfilled when it's not fulfilled we live a very sub superficial life for example mother teresa was a nun okay everyone knows right it was on a trip from kolkata to darjeeling that she heard the lord say serve the poorest of the poor do you know how much money she had when she started come on somebody should know her story yeah doralist tell me 5 rupees i mean you need guts to start something rupa spoke of guts and glory right you need guts sometimes and i won't say guts you need the grace of god to obey the will of god so there are three things you should remember when you're reading this passage please go home and read isaiah chapter 43 okay the first thing is an invitation the invitation surely you see in woman alive welcomes you to another year woman alive eight that invitation was probably prepared by us but the invitation was from the divine the second thing there's encouragement everybody says no no i am not capable i am not worthy i am not if you read the book of jeremiah he will say that isaiah says i'm a man of unclean lips i keep saying that who am i to be doing this work but there's an encouragement from god don't worry you can do it don't worry like fiona didn't tell share her testimony but fiona used to be a computer programmer and today she paints faces she is the head trainer for l'oreal earlier she was with christian dior today with l'oreal so if you hear fiona's story sometimes she she smiles the only thing i painted was canvas she said before but the encouragement from god is there and finally there's a promise the promise is that you're not alone please say i'm not alone so he who formed you o israel do not fear for i have called you by name for you are mine fear cripples you you know how many of you get frightened fear cripples you right you aren't able to do things because you are full of fear i won't say i'm very brave i remember when the corona virus started okay whatever it is one of our musician we have a team that also serves with us in australia one of them got ma- married and i flew for 3 days okay this is just before woman life 2020 happened and when i was coming back any way when i was on my way back she lives in wellington i was coming back and uh, i reached sydney and then i was coming i think i reached singapore and my son called me up one of my kids is in australia he called me up and he said mama where are you i said i've just landed mama don't go home i said where do you want me to go you'll kill everybody hello hello i'm not dying and nobody is getting killed i'm going home where do you want me to go and then he smiled not smiling he said he was very serious he got upset with me because i started laughing and he says mama you don't know that corona virus i said Uh, i won't his name is craig but i said will you keep quiet this airport is deserted i can't see us and i was feeling bad i could see everything abandoned you know i have seen that airport always busy and so but i have learned something from the lord and which i will take later faith don't get frightened i said okay if i have to get it praise god i did travel i didn't do as much as i have done over the years but i did have to travel but after that came in towards the end of december and i had to go again and you won't believe this time what was i scared of i wasn't scared of the corona virus i was scared of that test i could have i could i don't know what i had my imagination going riot and i'm thinking now they'll put that in my nose and they'll i don't know what 
I was not able to, you know, overcome that. Anyway, I said, Lord, I don't think you're going to change your plan, so I will go. And I was traveling just before Christmas. I want to tell you about the, the faithfulness of God. And on my return, my flight was just pre by 15 minutes, only 15 minutes. I landed in Bombay just 12, uh, sorry, 15 minutes before 12, 23rd of December. And you won't believe, I don't know what our government does, but all flights that landed after 12 o'clock were put in 15-day quarantine. I was honestly telling you, my heart beast, missed a beat because I said, Lord, Christmas, 15 days and imagine you are longing to be with your family. But I'm telling you, there are times you will face challenges and you are frightened. Like there were times I have landed in hospitals because people called us up and okay. And okay, there was a kind, but then I always remembered many of the saints went to places where they landed up getting also sometimes a disease. You know, Martin Porus, I think he died of leprosy living among the lepers. There are many people who have had God challenges us, but the one thing that we need not give in to is fear, because God is with us. Even today when you're listening to me, you know, you're very worried sometimes about the future of your children. But you know, the one who holds the future loves them more than you and I do. So the invitation I said was personal. So when you read Isaiah chapter 41 today, 43, please put your name. Do not worry today about your job, about your spouse, about your children, or about your future. Can I repeat this? Do not worry about your job, your spouse, your children, or your future. Because you may ask me this question, I'm only answering you through the word of God today. Why? Because you are precious in my eyes, honored, and I love you. Do not fear, I am with you. I told you, if you take the word of God, it will illuminate your path. Don't try to live a Christian life minus God's word. Ignorance of God's word is ignorance of Christ himself. It's not my words. It's the saints' words. It's not my words. So if you're not reading the word of God, every kind of fear will attack you. Every kind of trial you'll give in to because the Lord is not there to assure you. So I have a abbreviation for fear to faith, which is F-A-I-T-H, forsaking all I trust him. Can you repeat this? Forsaking all I trust him. Everyone who has, was created and called by my name, whom I created for my glory. Every one of us is created for the glory of God. When you see the life of Christ in anyone, you'd be you know, you look at this person and you feel very, very happy because the life of Christ, because we are witnesses. See, you are my witnesses, says the Lord. There are two things that we are called to, you know, by our baptism, what are we called for? Proclamation and witness. Proclamation is standing up probably and giving the word, but proclamation is also through our lives because more than, I'll tell you honestly, you can preach to everyone, but you can't preach to your family. A prophet is never recognized in his home, okay? So you remember this. So now don't try and take the word and go. It may not die. okay? So you have to realize, but your, your life is the only gospel they'll read. In fact, I have always told my kids, we have always made mistakes. All of us, I'm still making mistakes. Don't worry if you made a mistake. There's always a second chance. Jesus never condemns us. And we are called to do the same to others. Sometimes, you know, people happen and the one who accuses is never the Lord. The one who accuses is always the other one. Just remember you did this at so and so time. It's never the Lord. The Lord does not remember a single thing. He always forgives and forgets. So, you are my witnesses, says the Lord. And there is a promise. The promise is God provides, God created, and God redeems. 
so whatever you are going through whatever your financial need or your spiritual need or whatever it is god will provide because god has created and god will redeem you he will save you jesus is our savior and repeat this after me jesus never fails can you repeat this jesus never fails he never fails because he never gives up on anyone that you are praying for or yourself you know the book of acts i encourage you to read that book it's actually a continuation of luke's gospel but you will see the story of a jailer and you know when uh, he says he says in acts chapter 16 it is you and your family will be saved so don't worry today sometimes when you are listening to this program say hey, what will happen to my son no nothing will happen you and your family will be saved so there are three things you should remember the three important things the priority what's our priority what's our priority what does the ccc teach us first thing is to put god in our lives a purpose is come on that everyone should know the catechism of the catholic church teaches us come on lovely yes to know him to love him and to serve him can we repeat this again a purpose is to know him to love him and to serve us serve him and the third thing is the promise is that we are not alone we are never alone no matter where you are going through what you are going through the lord is always with us so the only condition is this do not remember the former things of old for i am about to do a new thing i'll repeat this again this is a year of miracles if you begin today thanking god even for three things that have happened in your life you will experience these miracles all the time all the time whether it's providence whether it's a job whatever it is you will experience if there's a broken relationship in your home and you claim this today but the condition is there on top do not remember the former things of old i'm not being critical of anyone but many times when we sit listening to people they come with us and they tell us right from probably sometimes you know right from say 1960 or 1970 or 1975 and the dates and the time and everything is there but you ask sometimes people to tell you three good things that happen they aren't able to tell you today i'd suggest with each one of you start maintaining a gratitude journal you know when we were when the kids were younger actually we have 10 of them now they're all all over fiona's three sons my four kids and i had another friend sunita she used her three kids they, they would play regularly okay every month they would come together and then we would have all of them simon was little among them now we have jonathan who is the youngest but if simon started her thanksgiving it would never stop and then all the older fellows are doing this when this is going to everyone she would could thank for the dog that she met down the cat somewhere the butterfly like the other day she played the role of mary and she saying i seen butterflies mama chandan singh it was so beautiful and i am wondering wonderful and they could see butterflies and but it was actually happening but for them this is excitement so for simon anyone from the watchman at the gate till whom she would be thanking but today i have realized even rupa is one who has that kind of a spirit it keeps them joyful and the reason is they don't remember they have a very short term memory whatever bad happens it's erase button and the new thing can happen in your life i would request you if god is reminding you that this is what is holding you against keep it away because you will find there's a promise you will find favor and good repute in the sight of god and people trust in the lord with all your heart things we need to know when we are moving towards the promise change your focus quit looking behind can you change your focus quit looking behind you can't run a race by looking behind can i do that no the second thing clear your focus you know when we, nowadays we have a problem and we wear spectacles because of the heat and there's always foggy things that are happening so we find it we have to constantly clean so clean your focus discover what god wants you, you to do and finally commit yourself to the plan of god 
because when you commit yourself to the plan of God, things will be wonderful. So there are four things that we do during this time. First thing is surrender. Surrender is not giving God, like you play a basketball game, you gave the ball to God and then took it back and went home. Surrender is I leave it at the feet of God. Second thing is trust. He loves you more than you love anyone and even your kids. If your children today will be getting married or probably going for higher studies, don't worry. Trust. Third thing is love and be open to the grace of God. Only four things. Because if you don't love, you can never experience the miracles of God in your life. Love means I don't come first. It's about sacrifice. It's about giving. So let's close our eyes and experience this thing as we will take a short break for tea and come back. I ask you to surrender this moment to the Lord and ask him to work a miracle in your life as we take the same way maker. Because we want to experience what no one else has experienced today. May this year be a year of blessings for us. May this pandemic that we went through be a lesson that we have forgotten what has happened, but we will learn that we will rest in his presence. And so as we come before the Lord and put our trust in him, we ask him to increase the joy of love, the joy of surrender, and we ask him to bless us. Can we all stand as I request you to make this prayer after me? We took it earlier, I'm repeating it again. Because we need to know our priority, our purpose. The purpose that comes with the promise. That do not fear, I am with you. Please repeat after me. Father, you've created me and put me on earth for a purpose. Jesus, you died for me. You died for me. And called me. And called me. To carry out your work. Carry out your work. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Help me. Help me. Fulfill. Fulfill. The purpose. The purpose. For which I was called. For which I was called. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.